Violence and turmoil have put Haiti on the brink of absolute instability. I'll start with giving you the disheartening details of the latest events in the country, along with later on the show, I'll share an absolutely insane successful operation of Siamese twins out in Texas, and also a wild reason why salmon are becoming quickly endangered in California. So, number 69 the Bullock, let's do it. So why isn't it getting national attention as well? If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. No one is talking about this. Starting over in Haiti this week with some scary times coming. This country is starting off 2023 in full turmoil. So far this year alone, which is just about only one month so far, there have been a total of 14 police officers killed by violent gangs, with seven of those deaths being killed on January 25th alone. That means that they are on pace for about 170 police officer deaths this year. Now, obviously, this wasn't an out of the nowhere purge that just happened to start on January 1st. Now, imagine you live in a country that has 11 and a half million people and you're still recovering from a devastating earthquake that killed 300,000 of your own citizens back in 2010. Your country has been very fragile ever since. Understandably so. However, fast forward to 2021 and imagine you turn on your television and the president of your country was assassinated in his own home right before he was about to expose high level business and government officials being involved in drug trafficking. Then you later found out that 28 foreign mercenaries stormed his residence and murdered him. And ironically, None of the president's bodyguards were shot or even injured in the attack. Suspicious? Well, absolutely. If a lifeguard says they did everything they could to help, yet their bathing suit is completely dry, a lot of that trust in the system would evaporate very quickly. You'd have to turn elsewhere to look for trust. A month after that assassination, another earthquake occurred in the country, killing about 1,300 people. So obviously now, a deteriorating government, which means gangs have started to fill that power vacuum. With gangs controlling actual infrastructure in the country, such as water distribution, transportation services, and even electric, it makes joining a gang the only way to actually survive. According to globalinitiative.net, there has even been a waiting list for gang memberships in Haiti. And what's being referred to as rebel police officers, more than a hundred of them have blocked streets and have been rioting in the streets themselves, damaging vehicles and actually broke into the prime minister's own home. When they found the home empty, the officers went to the airport where prime minister Henry was arriving back from a summit in Argentina and they stormed the airport trying to find them. Haiti's been reaching out to the international community for armed forces to come in and assist on the ground. Now with the war in Ukraine, not many countries are high on sending troops overseas right now. Currently, Haiti has a level four travel advisory, which is listed as do not travel by the State Department, which is the highest level due to security and health threats, as well as widespread kidnapping. Without an established civil government, if something happens to you while you're there, you're pretty much on your own. Now the UN Special Envoy for Haiti, Helen Lime, has expressed hope for some international troops to be sent, as she said last Wednesday that the situation in Haiti at this point is unfortunately very grave. All right, to sober us up from hearing about violence and chaos, which is unfortunately what most of the news is about a lot of the times, we're gonna jump right into the woods here with wildlife news. So let's do it. We 
We start out with a very rare sight of seeing a moose actually shed its antlers and then just take off like they were never part of its head in the first place. <laughs> what an unreal sight. Out in New Brunswick, Canada, wildlife expert Derek Burgoyne captured this rare moment on his drone, which he said is really a once in a lifetime moment. And I would agree, I've never seen that before. And now out to California with a really mind boggling puzzle that scientists are finally putting together. Officially listed as endangered on the endangered species red list, the winter run Chinook salmon out in California are starting to really head towards extinction. It's not only been hit with dams, droughts, and extreme heat, but now is also facing its biggest enemy yet, itself. Scientists are trying to piece together why the salmon are starting to completely ignore its traditional prey and starting to become obsessed with preying on anchovies. Unfortunately for salmon, anchovies carry an enzyme called thiamines, which breaks down a vitamin called thiamine, which is vital to all cells functioning in all living things. Now, if only the salmon had a nutritional fact sheet like humans do to go by, I mean, where is the FDA when the salmon need them the most? Now, being thiamine deficient, is also passed down from the female salmon down to their new hatchlings, which leave the newborn fish with difficulty swimming, and then obviously they don't last very long. 2022 was their worst spawning season ever. So hopefully scientists can slap some sense into the salmon, or, which is more probable, get them back on pace with some remedies that make anchovies seem undesirable. I mean, if they're smart enough to find that salmon are suffering from thymine deficiency, then they're definitely close to a solution. Now, someone who is full of solutions, we go out now to journalist George. All right, welcome back, George. It's always a pleasure to have you. Oh, yeah. What's on the itinerary for today? Well, as you know, food prices have been rising. Yeah, you're rising. not kidding. Killing everyone. A recent report out of Investopedia suggested that even if inflation mm. were to slow down or stop altogether, food prices are still considered quite high and are likely to remain high for quite some time. Their suggestion is if you're making changes to the way you eat or buy things, to think of them as permanent changes. You know, that's a good point. I never thought of that. You know, mm -hmm. people should stop yeah. continuing with the mindset that like, well, this is just temporary and start thinking about really what's best for yeah. them regardless. Good point, Dan. Have you had to make any changes yourself to, the, to your food shopping due to the cost? No, I actually haven't, believe it or not. It's really weird. I've been using HelloFresh no. for like two years now, no. and it's been, it's like exactly like $100, $104 wow. each week. And it comes with 12 meals that I get to choose, which is nice, but I've actually been expecting a huge price increase in the last like year especially, but it's never come. So I actually rarely go food shopping, actually. Oh, wow. A whole meal service to yourself? I bet you're starting to look like, mm, Doug Heffernan. Hmm? Real quick, what? real quick. Can you just say, can you sign on the dotted line for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> that was hurtful. Where the hell did that come from, George? Sorry, I thought man. we were having a productive conversation myself. here. Get yourself together there, bud. Fine, fine. Sorry. Yeah. Me. Jeez. <laughs> well, from my research, I would make these suggestions to people when they go food shopping. Number one, buy in bulk. It's cheaper in the mm -hmm. long run. All right, good point. Number two, eat at home as much as possible. Yeah. One soda at a restaurant costs Underrated. the same as a whole case of a 20 bottle case of water at the store. And number three, shop with a plan. Don't just shop aimlessly like you're at TJ Maxx. Go in with a list and come out. 
only with what you had on that No, Now, that is not bad oh, yeah. advice. Yeah, thank you. You're actually not as dumb as you look. <laughs> what? I have to what? get back hey. at you for that Kevin James comment before. So, <laughs> thanks, Georgia. We'll see you next get week. Back you, Mr. <laughs> I'm not done with you yet. Now, to one minute of news stories you've never heard about silent stories in 60 seconds. Let's do it. Starting over in Sicily, where there's a huge arrest made with authorities taking Italy's most wanted mob boss, Messina De Nero, into custody. He is most notoriously known for the 1992 bombings that famously murdered anti-mafia prosecutors Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino to compare it to the US. This would have been like killing Rudy Giuliani when he was prosecuting the mob. Now over to Malawi now, as the country has been hit with its worst cholera outbreak in over 20 years as the death toll has now surpassed 1,000 people, with the total number of cases being over 30,000, the highest ever on record for the country. Cholera is a bacteria found in contaminated water quite common in impoverished nations. Now into France as some turmoil taking place over Emmanuel Macron's new plan raising the retirement age from 62 years old to 64 years old. As you can imagine, transport workers, school staff, and refinery employees were quite upset and over one million of them took to the streets to protest. Now an amazing story out of the medical field in Texas that you do not see every day that is definitely deserving of the crown. So. Let's do it. Crown of the Week goes out to a team of Texas doctors at the Fort Worth Pediatric Hospital as doctors were able to successfully separate a set of conjoined twins. The 11 hour surgery was extremely complex considering the conjoined twins were born prematurely and adjoined by the abdomen, sharing the same skin, muscle, and liver, and other internal organs. The successful surgery involved 25 different medical personnel, including six surgeons. Once the separation was complete, the teams divided into two separate teams, each team conducting individual operations on the newborns. Now, Amy and Jamie Lynn, both girls are recovering as expected and the hospital is calling it quite the magical moment. This is so rare as conjoined twins occur in about one in every 50,000 births. So amazing story. Now, feeling like you're always busy with no free time, a new episode of Unspoken Truths. Let's do it. Time poverty. What is it and why it's driving anxiety, depression, and stress, aka unhappiness? A really interesting article out of Psychology Today discussed that when we feel short on time ourselves, we are less likely to give it to others. Makes sense. Exactly what poverty is. And you can't share something that you don't have yourself. The most infamous answer to the question of how are you used to be, I'm good. But ask that question to somebody today, how are you? And the response nine out of 10 times is, oh, I'm so busy. So how does a society who has more free time on their hands than people did 50 years ago, suddenly feel so overwhelmed with no spare time? One word for it is disconnection. Depriving ourselves of in-person social interactions with Zoom calls, text, and our social devices denies us that social connection that is so vital to our happiness and well-being, thus making us feel less busy. Our social devices are extremely important to functioning in today's world. Very true. However, I can't not mention the 35 minutes we waste scrolling in bed when we wake up each morning, and most importantly, those 90 minutes before bed when we just scroll away with our eyes when that 90 minutes 
used to be the time that our peers 50 years ago would use to reconnect with each other. It's the most pivotal part of the day to reach reconnection. The feeling of reconnection relieves us of the feeling that burdens us most, which is feeling busy. When you feel busy, you feel like you don't have the controller of your life. You might even feel a bit overwhelmed. Psychology Today suggests consider doing less, meaning look at your life like someone looking at cutting back on expenses. What do you absolutely need to be doing? And look at the amount of time you have left. You'll probably have way more time than you really think. And that is the unspoken truth. Now this show is about bringing you new stories that you don't see across your timelines. I cannot think of a better example than this continuous story I do each week. And with that, you know where we're going. To a developing story out of Chicago where police now say 14 people were shot. Shot fired 147 Maple Street. Requesting backup. Unit, stand by. Over to Chicago now. As this past weekend, we've got eight people shot in total with two of those shootings being fatal and the ages, unfortunately, being as young as just three years old to 52 years old. Now, an awesome podcast for you guys that just came out today with Penny Becker from Island Conservation. A lot of people really aren't aware that islands represent some of the greatest concentrations of all these different types of plants and animals but they're also where the most species extinctions have occurred. Up to 75% of all the extinctions that have happened, those things are happening on islands. We've lost reptiles and mammals and birds, and you know these great species are never gonna come back again. Now make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know which story was your favorite, and more importantly, let me know if there are some stories that I missed out there. And also look out for some more future podcasts I might drop soon too. And I will see you then.